So welcome back to Women Matters. And today we want to talk about appreciation. And we have Gertraud from Germany, who is a great appreciator. And is, um, you, you tell a little bit about yourself, maybe first in the check-in, and then we do the check-in all together. And then over to you to, to do what you want to do today, OK? Yeah. I just say a short little thing about me. I'm a coach, trainer, consultant. And um, 10 years now, we are together uh, as the appreciators. So my colleagues and I. And we came up with a method that we want to practice right now. So, yeah. And... Um, I I take over, Heidi. It's okay. So to yeah, let's, to let's do the do a, a yeah of check in. Yeah. You say where you are, where you come from, what why you are here, whatever you want to say for the introduction. Of yeah, this. and I would add one more uh, question to it. Uh, do you have any good news or interesting challenges that you want to share? Yeah, so name where you come from, a little bit about yourself and answering that question. Yeah, hi, I'm Eiko. I'm, uh, I grew up in Germany now, I live in Amsterdam, so that's where I'm at today. Originally from Japan. Oh, my interesting challenge is I might have lost a client. <laughs> Still checking. <laughs> um, and um, I feel um sadness or grief or something like oh 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 um kicking in adrenaline 40 percent, but 60 percent is like relief so i'm like hmm, interesting um yeah <laughs> good news is that we had a beautiful monday morning and <laughs> it's still my favorite day of the day the new day my favorite yes we normally give over when we have uh, spoken to somebody else to do the introduction and then mute yourself as you already did. So if you want to, to ask somebody else where they are from and what they are doing and so on. Yeah, um, Victoria and Beatrice. Um, yeah, I'm curious about you too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, we well, I will not speak for the both of us, but I think it's true. <laughs> we are very tired today. Um, we were uh, at a five day conference on dying and living, which was very enlightening and very beautiful, um, but also very emotionally draining because we were, there were a lot of, yeah, the, all the talks, but also there was a lot of community conversations where you thought about your own mortality, but also thought about um, people who have died in your life and your own grief and all of the challenges and beauties of all of that. So it's um, it's been a really beautiful experience, but I think I need a day off <laughs> or, or five um, to let it all sink in. Um, so that I think is my beautiful and my challenging news. Um, I guess news, since I didn't, haven't seen you since that happened, I submitted my final edits for my thesis last week. So I'm really, Congratulations. really, really officially done. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, um, yeah, that's me. You want to go? Yeah. Um, we're still in outer space, which is why Beatrice didn't say where we are calling oh, in from. Yes. <laughs> But we're physically um, in La Mesa, California, which is outside of San Diego, so Southern California, and it's a, um, a foggy, moist day, which for me is a huge relief after weeks and weeks and weeks of, um, of climate warming temperatures of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and my, um, I just saw Gertrude in the chat about willing to be, or, or are we going to do that after? After, okay. Um, <laughs> so right now the, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I say my good news is, this is my good news. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm celebrating as much as possible um, because she's planning to go back to New York um, soon. She's in a play um, 
and they sent the props to her apartment in Brooklyn instead of California, so she has to go back. <laughs> um, so that's it for now, but I'm so glad to be with you today, even though I'm exhausted. So thank you. And um, I would like to turn it over to Monia. Hello, I am Monia in Vienna, Austria, Central Europe. Uh, the weather is foggy and depressing, uh, but then the sun comes out and you wonder, should, should you be less de de depressed? <laughs> Anyway, my good news is that I, I happened to see Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom again. I don't know whether you know it, and it's just adorable. I love it. Yeah, uh, and Bruce Willis, it, <laughs> he is just, so that really cheered me up. And uh, I locked it so my husband can wipe it off because we have a, uh, it's, you know, it's YouTube and it's, it's rather complicated, but I want to keep it. It's really, I'm go I guess I'm going to look at it again. And my uh, grandchild, grandson, one of three, uh, he is 24 and he had just a militia training. And it reminded me so much of this Moonrise King, <laughs> what he showed us. Uh, the, how they had to sleep in one person tents in the fog, so it was terrible. And I was wondering if that ever ends. Yeah, we'll see. But he enjoyed it. He enjoyed meeting people from other provinces of Austria, which you usually don't. And uh, yeah, he is an easy going type. I pass on to Hannity. Can I first ask what training was that? Militia training. So you are no longer with the army, but you train as a, uh, as a civilian uh, two times a year. Or, and now they are preparing them for uh, being at the frontier or uh, Corona, just to check people for Corona. So they are training them. But none of them was uh, positive. So they all enjoyed what they did. Thank you, Munya. I'm Manali, I'm from South Africa. I'm in Johannesburg at the moment. And um, I just have a wonderful experience of co-creating two most beautiful experiences with people earlier today and three last week. So I'm really in a creative flow, which I really enjoy. I wouldn't call it a challenge. It's an opportunity to look at things differently, but we can leave South Africa, but I can't still enter Europe. So <laughs> we're living with it now. I mean, we realize now we really have to look at it differently and to really um, harness the virtual world till we can set foot in, in, the, in Europe and specifically in Switzerland. And I just want to share something related to our memory experience of last time. I had such a beautiful memory the last two days about when I was still in consulting in the business world, the names of the projects and the solutions that we had, it was incredible. It, it all writes a story. So it was a lovely memory to have and then to also be reminded of all the names of my schools, what story they were telling when I was a child, uh, to, you know, until university even, the threat of that. So that was quite inspiring too. And I give over to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. I had a good week. We had uh, olive uh, harvest and uh, one couple came on Monday, another couple came on Wednesday. And so we were all together, very inspiring and uh, good talks. And maybe even one person will help me to, to get some um, Erasmus funds maybe for my house. So maybe something uh, will finally um, happen with this. The other thing, I was very angry yesterday because there was planned a, a concert of, uh, in, in one of our parks, which there's, um, uh, that's my private park, you can say. That's the, the um, uh, Roman um, excavations here in our little, uh, going down to the river where I always go. And normally I'm alone there or I meet two people. 
And yesterday there was planned a little concert, just sort of pri half private, where were expected about 20 people. And in an area of maybe four square kilometers. And because of Corona, it was a uh, concert. And I said, I, I, are you crazy? What these measurements are now, that's crazy for me. So I'm, I'm really trying to, 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 to tell people that there are other ways to do and there are um, um, experts of high rank, at least as high rank as the one who are inducing that. And they give not only a critics of what is uh, going on, but also an, a plan how it could be better. And, you know, people don't know. And I didn't before either. So I try to tell people as much as I can about these alternatives, because I don't think that's a way to be dictated. <laughs> and uh, shut down all cultural and whatever other activities. So I'm still a little bit angry and I hope that uh, Gertraud can fix me a little bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a short breathing, like. <sighs> oh, I breathe the whole day. <laughs> but, <laughs> so beyond that, we'll see. Okay. Um, Heidi, where, where is that all happening? Italy. North of Rome. You know, the thing is we get uh, the, the infection rates, but nobody tells us who really is, how many really are ill and how many really are dying. That doesn't exist. These numbers we don't get, only oh. the infection rates. And that, that doesn't, doesn't save tell really anything. much. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That makes me angry. Anyway, the now percentage <laughs> of the tested people who get infected and die, that's the ratio, that's, that's important. Okay, so I'm in the middle of Germany, uh, north of Frankfurt. Um, I told a little bit about myself and my good news <laughs> is that I have uh, prepared, I had a seminar on the weekend and it was not many people, but uh, via Zoom, of course, and but it was the preparation was really worth it. And yeah, and so and I got rid of a lot of stuff that I had to do, like check, check, check. And I did. Yeah, and I recovered from two, two weeks of uh, sickness. And I'm on my 16th day of fasting, which is really good i mean i really feel like cleansing out yeah a quick review because maybe some people are new so i'm i'm going through our agreements that uh, uh blossomed out of weflow and i ask a question and you make a, a sign <laughs> of agreement or disagreement or whatever so are we inviting the possibility of being mind blown and heart blown? And we we added in a in another setting, we added soul blown <laughs> to it. Um, do we feel free to sink into present moment awareness with self and other, others as long as we want? Do we allow for spontaneous genius and creation? And do we aim for 100% play and maximum 69% seriousness? <laughs> do we agree to bring up assumptions as open-ended questions? And the base principle is we give freedom before anything. Okay, so, and a quick round, really short, just two or three words. What's your current mood and what's your desired mood going out of that conference <laughs> today? I start, my current mood is still a little angry on what is going on in the world. 
and the desired mood is more calmness. Thank you. I'm simple, <laughs> tired and awake. <laughs> But I think also just Those an opening, moves. opening of my mind and heart, um, which, or maybe it's already open, a, an awareness. I don't know, something, something like that. <laughs> Waking up. Um, yeah, ditto on the tired and awake. Um, and then I'm uh, expectant and I'm expectant. <laughs> 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 and I am excited and invigorated and I my expected is to be enthusiastic. Uh, I'm sort of curious but not too curious, just relaxed and I would like to be 100% joyful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so my current mood is um, tired, um, calm, oddly peaceful. My mind is like, aren't you supposed to be like sad and stressed? Like no. Um, my desired mood is. Um, even more peaceful, sinking into fundamental well-being and being, yeah, very compassionate with myself. Some self-care, guilty rest, yeah, nice. <laughs> For me, it's a little bit uh, nervous. <laughs> um, I'm calm. And my desired mood is uh, being listening. And <laughs> I don't know the word for it. Yeah, thank you all. Um, before we start, I just want to tell you that this is a coaching method that I'm going to apply and not therapy. And um, we ask everyone to be not only 100% playful, but also responsible uh, for yourself, for your own well being, but also for how deep you want to go. So, everything that is said is that's our own viewpoint of everyone, um, our own perspective, opinion, and you who who will be the one who is sitting in the middle, so to say, uh, you don't have to take anything anyone says. It's only meant to support you. And if it doesn't, then don't take it. <laughs> and us in the group who support that person in the session, it is um, not about us. We are only the sounding board for this person. And in the process, we always get something out of it. So um, I will tell you a little bit about the method and then we go into a round and just look what's coming up. And that is all on the table, even though we choose one. So then let's sink into present moment awareness and um, just some words about the, the method, I make it short. Uh, but this is um, the appreciators, our group was immersed in, in a process of writing the appreciation manifesto. Um, that's when I translated it, somebody came up and said, that's a manifesto. So, um, and when we found ourselves deeply inquiring into appreciation, what that meant to us, our work and our organization. So what emerged <laughs> was the following. And I put it in the chat so you can see. So the 
appreciation manifesto is appreciation starts with a clear view on what is. Too often, we automatically substitute what is with focusing on mistakes and weaknesses only. By shifting to appreciation, it enables letting go of one's own viewpoints and beliefs in service to seeing alternative possibilities. Appreciation means living from a place of benevolence towards oneself and life with a focus on what is good and provides the opportunity to learn and grow through all experiences, even challenging ones. Being in a state of full appreciation enables one to see a desired future possibility, embody that, and bring it into the present with freedom and ease. That's our understanding of appreciation. And out of this process uh, came a powerful tool in the form of a series of questions that by answering those questions enable individuals transcend long held fears and beliefs about themselves and the world with striking ease and speed. So what we are doing is three. So there's three steps and the third step will be anchored three times. So first step is identifying. I can put it in the chat as well. So. Oops, now I have it. No. So this, this, uh, these th three steps uh, go uh, the following. I, I just, at the moment, it's not possible. So the first step is to really identify the pattern Um, identifying the, the pattern of behavior or trigger or triggered experience and um, that is the, the, the main part to really get what, what is the underlying pattern of that behavior or of the trigger and then looking then turn around and looking at the strengths and learnings that you have developed out of those experiences. And step three is identifying a first step change or decision you might take here and now to change this. And then to anchor it, so you go into that desired future, you're imagining taking that step and you're already there and then you anchor it in feelings. So what feelings do you have in this new place? And where in your body do you feel it? And the second anchor is adjusting your body posture to reflect the energies and feelings and um, experience how does your body want to, to be in this new, in this new feeling and um, then expressing the feeling and the body posture with a sentence. And having done that, you imagine the, the triggering factor or the, and uh, look, what, how do you address it with your new being? So what we do right now is to have one minute silence and look what's coming up and then a quick share and just what's emerging right now what's the most powerful emergence that you feel right now and give it a title so we don't go too deep into it just just to have everybody here so what is something that is triggering you something that comes over and over again, or it's just very hard. <laughs> yeah, screams very loud.
when you're ready, just raise your hand. Just show you. Yeah. And you too? Yeah, okay. Uh, did I see something from you, Beatrice? Or yeah, you have one. Okay, good. So let's share just your title and maybe one sentence to it. <laughs> so we have, but the juice, we get what's in the room. You're muted. Beatrice, did you want to say something or? Oh, just... no, sorry. We, we, because we're in the same room, we have little side comments to each other. Okay. So okay. Your lips moving, it doesn't necessarily mean we want to say something. Okay. So, <laughs> Aiko, yes. you were the first to. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, for me, it's um, letting go of unaliveness. Um, I noticed that there are many um, projects and business relationships that are no longer alive and I've been just <laughs> leaving it on the side but I would like to yeah thank them and let mm -hmm. go. yeah thank you oh Martini Sorry. Who's next? Victoria. Um, I'm I'm not sure if if it if it's can can it be an emotion? I mean, what I, what I'm feeling is um is a a return to grief. So it's it's um it's a revisiting of grief. Mm -hmm. I think so since our box is highlighted. Um, mine is a it's a mix between a perfection and wanting to please others. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mine is um others' expectations of how you should behave in a specific scenario. Thank you. That's very similar to <laughs> what Beatrice said. Yeah. Hi, Martini. Monia and Tidy. Okay. Go ahead, Heidi. Okay. I, I, I don't actually know what I should say uh, now. I, I thought it was uh, asking the trigger and what is underneath the trigger. Yeah, that's what us underneath. That's what we're working on. But what is now? Yeah, just my, my raising trigger, its head. My trigger. I have already said before. And underneath is this. You can say despair. Of. Uh, of the. Not non ability or non respective, not, not ability to see a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And needing to 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 witness uh, one-sided, more or less ideological uh, things without uh, ideas and 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 um, attitudes, without being able to to say stop. That's not. We need to see much more. So I don't know how to how, how to say that. How to? Well, I think we got we got the, the, mm -hmm. the picture. Yeah, Monia. Okay, and uh, uh, Martini, we couldn't hear you, so uh, you just listen along. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> uh, my pattern of behavior is being tired, extremely tired, and blaming my age, because it's normal to be tired at my age, and that you have to if you recharge your batteries now and then. 
and yeah, yeah. And I really don't see any way out of it, but that's the way it is. Okay. Martini, can you talk already? Yes. I thought that it. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm late, but I uh, wrote, uh, I read that it is at six o'clock. Oh, that Heidi nice. said at six o'clock. No, it was winter six, time. It was six o'clock for Hanili, but for us, it's always the same clock. You know, we have changed. Oh, and, I'm sorry, Heidi, and excuse yeah. me, that is. Too bad, but uh, it happened. Okay. No. Uh, Martini, so. um, I think yeah? uh, looking at the time, we just you just um, yes come with yes. us, and and yes. uh, that will be very nicely okay. fitted in. So okay. yeah, I we just heard from everybody. Um, so so among these that have shared. What stuck stood out for you? Where do you feel that the yeah? Where do we want to go? With whom do we want to work? Just subjective <laughs> feeling and sensing into what is present right now and what should be addressed. I think that for me it was the, the pleasing others. I felt from um, in, uh, I'm not sure who is who Victoria and is. <laughs> yes. Um, it, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, then, okay, then are... <laughs> um, I think you said, um, yeah, um, so that, that really mm -hmm. that resonated with me as well. Yeah. For me, it was the grief, coming back to grief again and again. And again, you didn't talk about sadness, you talked about grief. So that's resonated with me. So, or maybe who, who says who wants to work? <laughs> like to suggest uh, coming back to grief that's also that resonates with me as well I, I guess it was uh, Victoria who mm -hmm. yeah so maybe she sits in for all of us I will, okay. I will be circular <laughs> okay <laughs> will that be okay with everybody like is that resonating with you to, to work on that okay so um, I just want to to say it's it's crucial that we distinguish the the steps. So we first look what so no solutions, no glossing over, nothing. Just looking what so, and then we go to the next step, the benevolence, and then the next. What's my next growth step? So. Um, Many people don't want to face what's it, what is, uh, and and also in the in the group. So I, I really to to make it, um, yeah, more fluent um, to to really do this honest the steps. On Friday, I had myself one work, and I really felt when the steps were not on it that I didn't feel safe. So, Victoria, going back to grief, what is that? You, you, there is already something that's coming over and over and over again. Can you say a little bit more? Yeah, it's, it, it, it happens with all of the losses I've experienced, but the one that is is... I feel is almost killing me right now is the loss of my husband. And um, that was 13 years ago, but it's come right up, right up in front of me. And, um, and he's in every dream every single night now. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't miss a night. <laughs> and, and so I think it's a reason 
also that I'm so exhausted all the time because I, I feel like I'm not sleeping at night. I'm just, I'm just either being visited or something. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's really weighing me down. And that happened since he passed or is it just reoccurring now? It's, it's both, um, not to evade the question, but, but I've noticed over, you know, it has been 13 years, I've noticed these spirals. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's both because <clears throat> it's, it's like I'm in a familiar place again, but it has, it manifests itself in a slightly different way. So it feels like a spiral, like I'm, I'm in the same place, but on another level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the staircase. Yeah. Well, no, more like a, like a spiral, like staircase. a spiral. Oh, a spiral staircase. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That one yeah. happened. Yeah. And you said it's uh, more dominant with him, but you all uh, also know it from others or from other losses. Yeah. The, some of the other losses, um, like the loss of my mother last year are, are more recent and mm -hmm. more still more raw they're more unprocessed mm -hmm. so they they're i'm trying to deal with them in a different way it's like it's in a different area mm -hmm. of my emotions yeah right now and before he passed was there anything that that was maybe not the same, but uh, the grief, the cycles of grief. Do you know that from before? Before he passed, absolutely. Because of um, that was maybe the hardest time of my life because he was still alive, but he was, he was ill. And both he and I were, were in denial. We were fighting, fighting for our lives, for his life and for Mm -hmm. our common life so that the the grief then was but but the grief then was mobilizing <clears throat> that was mm -hmm. the difference mm -hmm. <clears throat> and before that before he got sick do you know it from in connection with him no no just in connection do you know oh, that feeling from somewhere else um from another loss or from yeah yeah it i mean it could be a guinea pig in when you were little i mean it's it's just this this grief do you know that grief from some somewhere else Yes, I didn't know that till till you asked that just now. I think I think I've always known it. I think it's always been there. I thought it was depression, but now now that I look at it, I think it was grief. I just didn't know I didn't know what grief was. Yes. And and when you said always, how how long is that? um the youngest you can remember yeah yeah right right from the outset right from the outset from my first <laughs> yeah from your, your first memories yeah okay from your very first memories you, it, it 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 feels like inherited <laughs> <laughs> maybe so it was um well, I feel this is new now. You you opened you opened something that was never opened before. So now I'm trying to catch up. Um, I think I think it's really an existential grief. So if I inherited it, it was from like all eternity. It's not inherited. Well, maybe it's also inherited from my family. I don't know, but but 
this is I now that I think of it, it's it's much deeper. It's like a it's that ultimate sense of feeling alone and grieving something that is ephemeral some from somewhere in eternity that yeah that that is is lost, I guess. Can you feel it? I don't want to to ponder on it or so or go to I just want to to sense what it is and and then we go the next step. So yeah, so. I feel it. I, I just now I felt I felt almost like I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I feel it all right. Yeah. And where where in your body? So it's it's here in the chest and it's mostly breathing, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. I feel like I can hardly breathe. Mm -hmm. And I also feel sort of like, like like I'm being pushed down. Yeah. Like in a printing press. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have any memory of a specific event? And it doesn't matter beyond your husband. Um a, a number of them actually. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a child, just, just sitting alone, I would feel it, feel mm -hmm. it sort of coming down. Um, and then when I heard that my father had died, I was uh, 10 years old, no, mm -hmm. 11. Um, it, it was a, I remember it was a heaviness and I tried to escape it by opening the first book I saw and trying to read. And I remember feeling like my, I wasn't crying, but I felt like my eyes were being drawn into this blackness on the page and mm. I was being pulled, somehow pulled down. I don't know, it was a heavy feeling. Mm. And do you find a sentence that's resonating with that? This always known feeling of grief and coming back in cycles. Well, I, the first thing that comes into my head, but maybe it's um, presumptuous is what already came into my head as you were talking was this is our human condition. Okay. Okay, thank you. I would like to, we don't have a, to do a round, just if anybody can see something specific that you want to share with Victor, Victoria, uh, to, yeah, to, to get that, what is, what is that? So it's the human condition um, that resonates with me and it's not, it's it's kind of like everything. So I, it could be the sentence. I'm not sure. That's why I'm asking. So what did you hear? And just just like, what would your sentence be to offer to Victoria? And you take whatever you want, and the rest you leave, <laughs> Victoria. So it's just our opinion. I, I want to share, um, we've been talking a lot about uh, St. Augustine and the hole in the heart um, that only God can fill. Um, but suddenly I had this vision of, of the hole in the heart actually being a spiral that leads to the heavens. Mm. So I don't know, that's not a sentence, but that's a, an image. Yeah. And and w w the hole in the heart, what is that? 
is that a question for me or is that yeah happen? yeah I, I just wanted so now it's it's about getting what that is and find a sentence that that puts it in a in a yeah yeah and thank you for that nice image yeah I have uh, just came to me, despite of the human condition, we have the choice and also the right to be happy. Mm. Uh, I'm wondering about Beatrice's hole in the heart. That's an opening. The hole in the heart is an opening. So what comes through that opening? I can uh, resonate very well with the sentence, this is our human condition, but there is always an opening. Mm -hmm. And what is that opening and how can we become aware of it? And how can we go on the spiral through that opening i don't think about it it just comes up so it's it's not really <laughs> what is the personal in that human condition that's a question to victoria what, what is, is the that personal factor in that human condition for you? Um, you mean, how do I experience it? Yeah, I'm, I, I think that's the broader thing. Yeah, it's human condition and a whole, but what is personal to you that, that makes you so, I mean, we can all feel it when here and there. But for you, it's really like it shaped your life. Mm -hmm. So what is that personal part it, of the human condition for you? It is the feeling that um, I was one with everything and then pulled away and my purpose in life, if you want to call it an almost an existential purpose is to is to realize that if I see it with different eyes, I am still one. And the experience of being pulled away is is a subjective one. It's almost even though it feels real and heavy, it's it's actually an illusion because I never, that, I never. Yeah, I, that's clear. I, I just want to. What's your personal feeling about this? Oh, because oh, that is, oh. sure, it's an illusion, but yeah. Well, my uh, well. You said you you were pulled away from that unity. Yeah, and so that the, that. The, that is the fundamental grief in it. Right. Oh, so you want more about that? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm pulling a white dress. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, yeah, the pulling away is, is, um, is agonizing i just wanted to honor or maybe i'm jumping ahead in the steps i don't know what heidi said because um i have little tiny moments where i know i th there are moments of 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 pure joy where i realize mm -hmm. this i have it i have it that mm -hmm. i I may have been pulled away in time, but there's another, there's another dimension, and and it's a joy I can't explain. So I mm -hmm. know it, I know it's real. 
So, I mean, how we do get you to, we get to oh, that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. My, my question would be, um, or my observation, like this, this fundamental feeling of being separated, like a baby from right after birth to, to hospital bed or so, uh, really departed from this, this eternal unity. And then that everything that, I mean, your husband was ripped away, was also, so, so a loss is a reminder of that fundamental loss. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I see. That's perfect. You said it. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. And so, so it adds on with every person you lose, it's, or especially your husband, this is like eternal grief somehow. Yeah, there's layers and layers. It, intens it intensifies. Yeah. So, and do you, can you think, or you already said it, that it might not be true that you were ripped away, that you couldn't lose it? anyway even though it occurred it i know it's true okay good y you know it's true that what i know it's true that um that i can't uh, that ultimately i can't be ripped away yeah it's impossible it's yeah. impossible so no the feeling is very real but not real <laughs> okay so the second step is now and we include everybody um what is it that you acquired out of it what you learned out of it what qualities did you did you develop out of it what strength out of this fundamental feeling and i think they the human condition that is something that everybody feels in a way but you felt it in a way that still lets you grieve that still i mean so much more than many others so uh yeah what what did you learn out of it what what came if you have a benevolent you on yourself so what what is it and you might start if you want to, or we ask the group because we know you a little bit now. <laughs> so yeah, we could... ask, go ahead and ask the group. I, I okay, feel like... I, I start with that. So who wants to, what do you see in Victoria that she developed out of that fundamental grief that is reoccurring in, in spirals? Yeah, Beatrice. Um, I obviously can't speak to the time before me but I suspect, I suspect that um, it was true then as well. I actually further suspect that maybe it was even true as a child, but I don't know. Maybe my mother can corroborate that. Um, but, but my experience in my lifetime is uh, this deep, deep empathy and compassion for others. And whenever she sees someone even, even an ounce in pain, especially emotional or spiritual pain, uh, she's immediately there to hold that person, um, both both physically and and um, metaphorically hold them. Um, and I've seen it time and time again. I mean, the story that comes to mind, which maybe it's just because we've talked about it recently, but we were in Japan. We were walking through this beautiful cemetery area, and there was a pet cemetery nearby. But we were just looking at it, just aesthetically and this man was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and sobbing a stranger and my mother went up to him and she had just she was just learning Japanese but she learned she used the Japanese that she knew to comfort him and to share what she she had just happened to learn some Japanese that related to biology and so she could talk it turned out he had lost his dog and anyway um and he was so I mean it was the transformation and I was very young but I could told I could see it um, it was very clear to me that he he had needed that that comfort that voice to come in, um, 
but also like friends of mine. She takes them under her wing. She mentors them. Um, anyway, that's, I always associate it with kind of a motherhood thing, but I think it's deeper than that. It's not, it's not just because she's a mother. It's, yeah, it's the empathy, the deep, deep empathy. <laughs> Sometimes, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes, Sometimes I guess it's so pronounced that she, <laughs> She gets jealous of the, the her friends that I mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What do you see in Victoria that she acquired out of this fundamental separation? I, I don't really know you, Victoria, personally, but we have uh, talked several times. And I do think that this goes into your music and into your determination to do it. And also when you did the, or you are still doing this, um, um, how do you call the talks about Raphael, that this goes into it. And you also said that it is because you want to continue the work of your husband. So this is part of both the compassion, but also it's you bringing it forth, you know? Uh, so it's your power. I think you are a very powerful woman, so. <laughs> yes, Victoria, I, I, from the first time mid-year, I felt you have the ability to feel deeply. It's not only empathy, it's how you, presence what you hear in your own body, which I now feel in my feet. So it's, there's a deep grounding energy about you. But even though you felt ripped away, you are so present in your body here. Although you might not feel like it, but I can sense it in you. And, and I agree with Heidi about the, the determination is visible in you is that it's, it's a deeper spirit that comes through just you not doing anything, you're just sitting there. So it's, it's a, or, a auric thing, it's a presence in your energy, which gives someone like me then the feeling grounded through you. Thank you. Maybe that's why I do tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention that. And you oh. also said, moments of pure joy so uh this came out of it so that you really are aware of your presence and the moments of joy for me i when i listen to that this is very fundamental and i and it feels like i i've heard from a monk in in uh, tibet who said I cannot, so he, um, he, he, somehow he wanted to prevent to go to Nirvana or, or whatever they call it. And, and he said, as long as any soul in the world, uh, in the world is not um, salvation, I mean, in, yeah, I don't know the word for it. I need to be here and I'm still I still come back and back and back. And, and for me, it's, it's like you hold that. And, and when I listen to Beatrice, like, um, so it's, it's so far beyond motherhood or just empathy. It's, it's this deep knowing of that separation uh, and, and the longing to be whole again um, that everybody holds. And you you know it on a tangible uh, level. And, and for me, this is like really the one who, yeah, to, to create wholeness, to, to make that fundamental separation um, undone or at least the illusion of that. That's it, the illusion. Yeah. So 
to, three, to see through the illusion. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I, I'm so touched, but um, uh, that was, thank you guys. Just thank you so much for sharing. Uh, that was so powerful and beautiful. I see so much in you, Victoria. Um, the beauty, like inviting beauty. Um, and transcending whatever pain and invite beauty into the space and the, the immense amount of it is so overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. And um, what do you want to add, Victoria, <laughs> or to say? Well, I, I'm just amazed and I'm so grateful. Um, it's amazing that every single thing every one of you said um, resonated instantly. It was, it was like a little spark of uh, divine truth sort of coming in. Um, which is is so um, so nourishing because I I often get lost in the experience of the grief and and I forget everything in in being overwhelmed and um, I mean even even the you know the combination of things like what Heidi said about the music and what um, well now you've all said such beautiful things it's all sort of together now in one but. In, in the grief conference, the yesterday there was a ritual where you were supposed to choose one ancestor to honor as the ultimate ancestor, and um, and I wrote Mozart, and 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 then <laughs> I thought no, no one's going to understand this, or you know, they're going to throw me out of the conference or something, because I knew it was supposed to be like my grandmother or somebody, yeah, sure. and. But I, I tried to, I tried to like get it away, and I thought, no, no, I've got to put somebody else down, and I couldn't. Like Mozart just was in there, and I thought, okay, okay, Mozart, no, <laughs> <laughs> this is your time. <laughs> and um, so it's so true. It's it's a it's like a continuum. It's it's so beautiful, and um, I often fight against it. But you you have um, all of you have have acknowledged that it's. It's, uh, it's okay. <laughs> so thank you. I just want to add one more um, thing that came up. Uh, Fabio uh, Cababiano, that's, that was a little boy, and now he's grown up. Um, and his mother collected his paintings and drawings when he was very little, and he explained her the universe. And, and then one day his father, so just amazing stories. Um, he, he just knew everything. He was connected to everything. And uh, one day his father said, do you know the story that when you, come, when you come to this world that an angel kisses you on your mouth and you forget um, where you have been so you can be here? And then he said, yeah, I know, but I, ch uh, I turned my head. <laughs> <laughs> and that reminded me of you. So yeah, you turned your head, I think. And, um, and so you, you really know this other world in a, in a deep sense. And yeah. And so having said all this, um, it's time for the next, the third step. And that is what is your next step to take? What is your next growth step? So what is something that that wants to develop into. Are you asking me? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's about you. Okay. Um, well, this is so validating because I've been telling um, my critics, um, I don't mean my critics in my professional life, I mean the people close to me. <laughs> um, gesture to me. No, not you. Meet this one. <laughs> No, um, actually my friends, um, the friends I'm in contact with, 
who are criticizing me for becoming a Zoom addict um, and a conference addict and a spiritual journey addict and all kinds of things. I keep saying to them, I don't, I don't know why this is or how this is and what it all means. But all I know is I wake up every morning and I'm drawn to this, this process. And I don't, I can't tell you right now why, but I am pulled even more than I remember being pulled by music. So I think what it is, and, and um, I hope it's what it is because it's something that I would have wanted to choose anyway. Oh. No, Martini just started a screen oh. by accident. Okay. Are we still here? You're still here. Oh. Um. <laughs> we can see ourselves. I just hope. keep talking. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Martini, can you push on the um, green button or so to because you're you shared your screen somehow? Thank you. Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, and I lost my, oh, um, no, I think that what, um, if I have a, a, a mission, if you want to call it that, um, whatever it is, it's, it's pulling me. It's a real, like vocation comes from vocare, you know, in Latin to call. I, and I feel that it's like I'm being pulled into this is to um, reach out to even more people to, with, with, the, with empathy and compassion and, um, and this this time, this crisis is to me. It's not a coincidence that it, as we become further and further isolated through technology, we become closer and closer connected. I mean, in this circle, um, or circle of squares, as they called it at the <laughs> Dying and Living Consequence Conference, um, you know, I feel so close to all of you, um, closer than to any member of my family ever. Oh, but you're here, you're here. <laughs> Um, no, and, th and that's, to me, it's a miracle and it's, and it's here for a reason. And, um, so I'm, my next step is just to follow. Yes. Just to, to follow. follow. To follow. Yeah. So, and, um, now I want you to imagine you already followed that. So really quite, quite some time. So you're completely in that you followed that path. And just imagine you're already done that. So maybe you close your eyes and just just be that. It's you you've already followed that path and you know it's a vocation. It's not just an addiction. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's clear that's the there it goes. This is the path. So how do you feel? You already done that. So it's it's already some month or years into that. I, I feel whole. I feel whole. Mm -hmm. I feel and, integrated. Yeah. And do you have any emotions? Um I feel peace, but if I can share with you what the thing that really startled me, this is just amazing. I mean, this is what this process today has been like 50 years of, of philosophy studies or something or theology. I always wondered how God could hold the pain and grief of the world and not just fall to pieces and no longer be God or anybody just dust floating around in the air. And now I get it. Now I get it. It's 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 in the integration that it's possible to hold this this profound grief, and it's because it's balanced completely and integrated with joy. Mm. It it's it's completely whole, and there's and it's it's it transcends it transcends the the negative and the positive it's it's in a in a place by itself I, I can't really explain it but that's what came to me suddenly and where in your body do you feel it this new being well now i can't breathe but it's adrenaline uh, it's exciting. <laughs> i feel excited now but i have to say um i keep <laughs> the, the little mozart thing keeps coming i hope i can still play the violin <laughs> <laughs> on the side or something. 
Yeah, and imagine this is doesn't mean that you cannot do the worldly things. You still tap dance and you still play your violin. It's not either or. Just be in this and in the world. So just go there and then find a body posture that resonates with it. You can stand up, lie down, jump, tap dance, whatever you want. <laughs> Look what 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 is resonating with this new way of being. Yeah, I feel taller and my mm -hmm. tension is gone in my shoulders and neck. Mm -hmm. Too early to tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> and and anything that your arm, your head, your whatever want to do. I want to hug all of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I can kiss you. <laughs> yeah, 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 please. <laughs> ah, so stay in this new being stay in your new bo uh, body posture and just be silent for a minute and let a sentence bubble up that is comes from that place not from your thoughts i love you that sounds pretty universal like <laughs> this one <laughs> and yeah say it again i love you and imagine now that with this new being how do you deal with the grief It just feels like a richness now. It feels like like sort of a very fertile, warm, damp soil. Sort of and now I now I feel like a tree, and and the grief is is the soil, but I need it there. But I can still branch out into the sky. It will it will allow me to branch out into the sky. And it's still true. I love you. <laughs> and it's still true. Yeah. You still love him. Yeah. And yourself. And the world. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's you being love. And when you say that sentence is directed to this person and this person, but it comes from a place of <laughs> the whole person is love. Thank you very much for going all the way, all the way. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And what I want to do is now to, we call it a, a present round. Uh, it's like, what do you want to say to Victoria now after this process? Yeah, what, whatever that is, um, something you, you didn't say before or something just came up or yeah, just something you want to give her as a wordly present. Victoria, thank you for for embodying love and presencing it to us. Thank you. Victoria, you are absolutely beautiful. Oh. Beautiful being. <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad I got to be here and I feel like I understand you at a whole new level and I hope that that can shift our relationship. Shift it so we don't quarrel so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
bef I before, it. yeah. I, I, I just want to say you can sit down again, but uh, just <laughs> put in in your heart all that, so so it rests very well here. <laughs> and write down the you, sentence. Victoria, and I love you, Heidi, and I love you, Gertrude, and I love you, Hanely, and I love you, Beatrice, and I love you, Erke, and I love you, Monia. And Martini, she is invisible. Oh. <laughs> and Martini, <laughs> of course. <laughs> invisible. Well, oh, Moni already said it, but yes, I love you. <laughs> I feel blessed that you trusted me to go that process in such a deep level that uh, it's beyond <laughs> my normal work. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just a gift to see you. It, it, it's kind of, you said soil, it's kind of a, um, a flower coming out of fertile soil and, and, and just, you know, like just in this, this, stage and, or tree or whatever that that's really blooming and yeah I feel a lot of gratitude and love well it wouldn't have happened without you Gertraud so <laughs> you know it's to me it's a it's a miracle nothing short of a miracle because I I came into this feeling like um that hard desert soil that's like <laughs> you pound and pound and pound and nothing grows and nothing happens and the seeds are all still there a year later on top of the soil <laughs> and now I I feel like this like like the tree is growing so fast I have to like hold it in to well not hold it in but <laughs> I have to keep up with it now <laughs> thank you Thank yeah, you thank you all. And uh, let's close. Uh, we are over time, but I didn't want to, <laughs> to interrupt the process. So um, just a short round. And what do you, what's your takeaway? And what do you acknowledge in yourself? <laughs> and maybe you want to appreciate somebody for a specific quality. Then who wants to go, <laughs> goes first. I think that not only do I have a, a deeper understanding of my mother, but I think it'll also, I need to reflect on what this means for my, my identity and, and having grown up in this, <laughs> part of this <laughs> uh, to come to have come out of this too um but I think there's so much there too of of why I'm doing the work that I'm doing and why I have the the drive and passion and deep feeling that I have it's different it's a different kind of thing but it's definitely related and definitely a lineage so that's something that's my takeaway my takeaway is to reflect on what all of this means from my, my personhood. Um, and I have a deep gratitude for everyone in this circle of squares. <laughs> um, and for you, Gertraud, for, for leading this. Thank you so much. In the beginning, I was jealous because I wanted to go. <laughs> but I'm actually, no, I'm actually really happy. No, I'm really happy. I think this is this was really powerful and beautiful. And I am so, I'm so glad I got to be here to witness. And um, yeah, thank you. I just want to quickly, because um, uh, you actually thought of it, Gertraud, and I, I was so swept up in the moment I forgot. Um, of course, I appreciate and love you all and dearly, but I want to just put in a word of appreciation to my husband because um, he helped me <laughs> bring this into the world, and um, and his whole nature was love. It, he was 
he was, I always tell people if they ask what he was like, that he was to me, the, the most Christ-like person I've ever known, just, just full of love and compassion and, and, and a kind of sweetness and humility. Except for Rumpelstiltskin. Except when he got angry and then we called him Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so anger's okay too, Heidi, <laughs> for the right causes. So thank you. Yeah, I don't want to take up more time. Thank you and bless everybody. I love you all. And you can acknowledge yourself for your courage. <laughs> Not knowing where to go, where it lends, anything. So just, yeah, discover the end. Well, that's where I appreciate you, Gertrude. I totally trust you. I could follow you to the ends of the world and well, not thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank Heidi, you. Heidi looks surprised. Maybe she knows you better than I do. <laughs> I was just wondering where the end of the world is. <laughs> Gertrude will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I also appreciate Gertrude's professional and telling us that it's just a coaching, not a therapy. <laughs> um, and I envy Beatrice for having a mother and a father like this. I wish I would have, I had one like this, yeah. I really, I'm really envious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. That's why they call Wien the Neidgenossenschaft. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's what we want. So I know what I want. And that's, yeah, what I try to be to my grandchildren and children. And thank you, Gertra, very much. Appreciate it very much. And Heidi for providing the room. And Haneli for her presence. And Elko for her feeling. <laughs> Martini for not being visible, but with us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I, I take away that, Victoria, what you so deeply went into with all of us present, that it's applicable to me as well. On, on a deeper level, for whatever my story is. So thank you for that, Gertrude. And Victoria, and for everyone present here uh, in the space of us simultaneously go through this process. And I just want to acknowledge your bravery as well, Victoria, to go to that level and the embodiment of what we just see in front of us now is something that will I take to bed tonight with a warm in my heart. Thank you, Heidi, for always just cre creating these beautiful spaces for us to go into whatever we're exploring. And Monia, yeah, thank you for everything that you embody and presence, your, your wisdom, and Gertrude for this beautiful process. And Beatrice for your youth and your, you're so authentic, you're just like your mother. And you are also so, yeah, just fearless is the word actually. And I can also that expression of your intense deep feelings. And our, I wouldn't agree with Monia, invisible Martini and also myself for showing up today and in the process also going to myself. So thank you everyone. What I'm struck by always when we do things like that, that it takes actually so little, an hour and a half, and that can change everything, you know, when we are together and when it is guided in a reasonable process, which obviously that is. And my wish for the world would be that we could do that more often and for more people and you know, that would be a, a huge healing. And I thank you exactly too, Victoria, that you, you 
gave us again, not again, you for the first time, but the possibility again to see that, that it is possible, you know, to, to, to step into a different perspective, which is sort of enlightening, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I, I personally love these cool processes and that's why I do it. And I'm grateful that you are coming and sometimes it's coaching, sometimes it's something else, but maybe we should think about do that every now and then if once a month or so doing a, a coaching with somebody of us, maybe also other modalities, what, whatever comes up. I think it's wonderful and I'm really grateful for Victoria, you are, the, the rose has opened. <laughs> And for everybody else, thank you. Oh. Yeah, I acknowledge myself for being here tonight. Um, even though I felt super tired, I thought, oh, let's just flow. And um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to witness <laughs> What, what I've experienced <laughs> um, in, a, in a space like this. Um, yeah, you get how it's magic. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, I would like to keep it short, so. Um, yeah, Beatrice, I'm, I really appreciate your, um, yeah, your, your, your pure, <laughs> <laughs> embodiment of the pureness um, and when when um, your mom um, yeah appreciated your dad it was just I, I could just see um, <laughs> that all the qualities in you um, that you got from your both um, both of your parents so I really want to appreciate those that you carry um, and yeah, the work that you bring um, into the world. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I I'm 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 on it. And thank you for taking it on in this setting to to know, want to know what I'm doing. <laughs> And uh, I'm, I'm really deeply grateful also for each and every one because we can do it one on one, but in a group setting, it's, it's, it's this space holding and this benevolence towards that person that's in the middle. Um, actually, you're in the middle for me. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, it takes to be of service to somebody else. And while doing that, somehow the own stuff is <laughs> changing too. So thank you very much for your listening, for your contribution. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very grateful. And um, I'm open to anyone. <laughs> I love those sessions too. So Heidi, yeah, and if, anyone wants any time to, that we just do it again I'm, I'm very open to that as well yeah and also who is listening later to the recording you know there are coaches like Gertrude around and you can connect and if you like the process and we will see who else will step up in the future there are so many wonderful tools and you don't have to sit and despair there are people willing to help and to give you a little guidance so that you can discover yourself what is there. And that's the important thing. So Yeah. And I want to acknowledge WeFlow as well. So I, I came to in the IEC conference, in the integral conference, I came to across them. And um, maybe I can just say uh, www uh, we flow we dash flow.net there so if anybody's interested then maybe 
So I really learned a lot from them. Yeah, and uh, do you want to share also your uh, address or your where they can? Yeah, it's a it's a German address, but you have to translate it. The the English side we it's not not so, but it's Wertschätzer. <laughs> we can put it under the video in the um... yeah Wertschätzer.com. Okay, so thank you, girls, and also Martini in the dark that you have been here, and hopefully in the future we can see you better and hear you better. And with that for today, I say goodbye and thank you.